So let me show you how to do linear regressions in R. So I'm going to do a very simple, a short video to show you all the figures in, in the theory video. I'm going to use this as combi quartet uh, data set. You can download it here as usual. So you can see here the, the main idea. So in all cases, and here I'm plotting R square according to the summary of the feed, and I'm going to talk about that later, but in R feeds, our linear regression uh, feeds are doing with the function uh, LM. So here I'm regret, uh, doing a regression between y2 and x2. Um, you can see that all the cases have the same correlation, the same r squared, which is 0.66. But clearly this is a good example, but this is a poor example of linear regression. Here the outliers are messing things up. And here we are not fulfilling this condition that the variance should be the same in all the data points. So now here I have a lot of variance here and variance zero there. So this 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 case um, is not fulfilling the conditions of, of applicability of linear regression. So let's go back to the main idea. So remember, this is a data set, and this line is not good enough because I'm underestimating most most of the points. This line is not good enough because it's not it's very close to some points but far away from the others. And this is the winner because it's a kind of trade-off between having 50% in each case capturing the trend and having the, the lowest distance from the, from the line. Okay, you can do this by brute force. And again, you can see that the optimal slope is 0.5 and the optimal intercept is three. So let's do another thing. So you can do this in R, remember the syntax, LM, Y1 versus X1, and the data set is called D. And the summary, you can see here that, uh, again, the intercept is 3 and the slope is 0.5, which is this working pretty smoothly. And the correlation is 0.666, okay? So you can plot then this idea of how to compute R squared. So this is Y versus the number in the data set. So this number is not very important. So this is just the row in which you can find this data point. This is the mean value and you can see that there are a lot of data points which are far away from the mean. What if we introduce the fit? Now you can see that all of the sticks, all of the distances are now reduced. And that means that this fit is good in terms of reducing the variance. So the variance with respect to the mean is computed by subtracting every observation with respect to the mean and then take the sum square. And if you compute the predictions with predict as usual, and we subtract the observation in the data set with the prediction, and then we obtain the variance. So computing R square by hand and using R provides the same result. Okay, more stuff. If you w if you want to use caret, we have the, the same syntax as usual. So I'm training a model, which is a linear fit model, in which the formula is one, y1 versus x1, and the data set is d, and you obtain exactly the same result. Okay? More stuff that we cover in the theory video. Here is the BMI. We have different parameters. If I plot just body fat versus BMI, you can see that clearly there is a good a good trend here so there is some uh, some chances that bmi can predict body fat so let's do a fit again let's take body fat for the data set bmi and let's calculate the summary of the fit and you can see here that the intercept is meaningless because it is is absolutely ridiculous to consider a guy with a bmi equals to zero that would mean that he has zero weight kilograms and uh, the, the, the slope is more relevant. So for every point in your BMI increase, then your body fat percentage is increased by 0.74. And here, remember the R square give us one of the interpretations that this is 53% of the variability of body fat is explained by BMI alone. Of course, there are other things like your genetics, I know your age or other stuff, okay? What if we uh, standardize the data? Then we can use caret again. We are going to preprocess BMI centering, which means subtracting the mean and scaling, which means dividing by the standard deviation, create a new data frame, and then repeat the plot. It's the same. You can see that you're going to distinguish between these two plots. But here, the mean is in zero in both variables, and the range is more or less between minus two standard deviations and two standard deviations. Okay, so this is the mean. And again, you can see that now the Coefficients are different, but the regression is the same. And we have this nice interpretation of the slope. If you take the slope, we, you can do it uh, with this coefficient function or simply plug in this number there. You can see that this is the same as the correlation there. More stuff. Now for the Galton data set. 
let's filter just for the males in the data set. So here basically I'm saying take the Galton data set only for males and then plot hi the height of the son with respect to the height of the father and then do the summary of the feed, plot some lines like I know the mean value of both of them and the straight line. Uh, this is interesting if you use the function AB line with a feed obtained by LM then automatically pl R plots you this line and you can see okay you have a good uh, relationship here the slope is 0.44 okay and the regression is 0.15 and as you can see in this calculation as the mean and the standard deviation are more or less the same this slope is more or less the same as if you obtain the same standardizing this is not exactly the same so as you can see that the correlation obtained here is 0.2 and the real one is 0.15 and this is because of these slight differences but in terms of interpreting this as regression towards the mean you can see that whatever the mean and the standard deviation of y and x are almost the same then this slope square is a good interpretation of of the correlation and this is more or less what i cover in the theory